Welcome to A Seeking Heart with Allison Jingris, distributed through Breadbox Media. I am joined today by Sam Fetzinger. She is the author, co-author with her husband, Rob, to the new book from Ave Maria Press, which is very exciting, A Catholic Guide to Spending Less and Living More, Advice for a Debt-Free Family from, uh, yes, Advice from a Debt-Free Free family of 16. I knew I would get it out eventually. Sam, thank you for joining me today. And thank you for having me. Uh, this topic is near and dear to my heart. Um, I, My husband and I have been together since we were 16 and 18. I really loved when I read the introduction that you and your husband have also been together for a very long time. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so yeah, I was 16, and he was actually um, 19. <laughs> My kids are like, I can't believe Graham let you date dad. I'm like, I was the youngest of nine and the fifth daughter. My mom was like, get her out, <laughs> go off convent or get married. So yes, we did. We dated for about two years. We took a two-year break, and then we started dating again and got engaged right away. Well, I love I love the story in here about the engagement. You just share so much of your life. Um, but what I was really struck with was, and, and very envious, I'm going to be very honest, was how young that you and, and Rob both understood the importance of having a good financial goal and understanding. Tell me, tell me about that. So, yes, we tell people that we did have this we were on the same page with finances but you know marriage is hard <laughs> and, and we struggle in lots of other areas so we've been married for 32 years and every year you know marriage is hard every year has its new struggles uh i tell people you know stay on your knees and sacrifice yes. and fast for your spouse because marriage is tough and i know it sounds um a little blunt sometimes. I mean, I tease people. I'm like, you know why old women cry at weddings? Because they know that poor sucker's about to get in herself into. <laughs> That's and very I love funny. my husband. And if it wasn't for the sacrament and God being in the center of our marriage, I'm not so sure that things would be the same today if we didn't have that sacrament. So please don't envy me for having a great marriage because we're like, we love each other, but sometimes we don't like each other. Well, I envy just the part about finances, just to be yes. honest. <laughs> well, and we all, I say everybody, everyone struggles with finances, whether you have too much or you have too little or you're trying yeah, to figure yeah. out and balance, you know, isn't our whole life about balance and finding that, that virtue. It's so, interesting that you say that because my husband always talks about how marriage is this triangle and God is the fulcrum point where he keeps you in balance. Like yes. you need you, your husband, and you need God as part of that to keep that balance. Yes. And God definitely has a sense of humor because I could not be any more extroverted and he could not be any more introverted. <laughs> and so be, because of that, he likes even, like I said, even now after 32 years of marriage, we still like find each other, like helping each other out on this. You know, that's our goal in life is to get each other to heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a year ago, he got to, he doesn't travel with his work, but he had to go out of town for work um, for like five days. And I was like a kid in the candy shop, like, <gasps> like my dad's leaving and I get to have a party or something. I was like, oh, I can I can stay up late. I can watch Hallmark. I can do all the things that he hates doing. We can have cereal and pancakes for dinner. Like, all the things. Well, after like three days of him being gone, I like was tired and grouchy and I felt sick from eating junk and the dishes were in the sink and the bed wasn't made and I was exhausted because we weren't getting to bed on time. I'm like, he makes me such a better person. <laughs> and I thought, well, I guess I'm grateful that I had this opportunity to really appreciate him and oh, I nice. am like trying to be a better wife and he makes me be a better mom and a better wife. So when it came to finances, we began, you know, I was 21 and he was 24. We uh, felt like, you know, NFP was a gift to the church, but we felt that, you know, I'd want to be, I had wanted to be a mom since second grade. <laughs> and right before, you know, we went through the NFP classes and everything. And right before about um, four months before we got married, we both kind of felt 
at different times, like him in adoration and me, I went to a pro-life talk. We kind of felt like God was saying, you know, you both want to have children. Is, you know, is there a reason why you are postponing this right now? And even though we have seen um, NFP be used by people for um, to get pregnant and not to get pregnant and to follow what God's calling their family, we felt like, okay, you know what? Maybe it's not right now that we need to use this. And so we both decided that we were going to, you know, stop doing the temperature thing and all those wonderful things. And I knew we were getting married on May 20th and I knew, um, right, that I was going to be very fertile on our honeymoon. <laughs> And so I said to him, "You okay? You sure you're? You know, if this what I learned from NFP, if this is really what you want, this is what you know the situation." And we both were like, "Okay, Lord, you know, trust. We just trust. We just trust in you." And he kept telling us, "Like, just trust your lives with me." So we did. I got pregnant on my honeymoon, and so we knew that um, w that we were going to be start off like with hardly any money, and we just had to. Uh, my goal was to try to be a stay-at-home mom, and that was going to be difficult because he was just working at a bank. So we put away the little bit of salary that I was getting until our daughter was born. And then on top of that, God asked us to open our own business. We opened a Christian bookstore. You know, all, you know, our family, wow. as a mother-in-law now, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Our family must have thought we were crazy. We opened this Christian bookstore, and it was just one one wow. saying yes after another. And God kept saying and fulfilling and 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 giving us everything we needed at the time. So we started this business. We had this baby. We were living, uh, you know, paycheck to paycheck. But we knew that we couldn't get into debt. So we were very grateful um, that we did not have college debt, which is probably I think one of the biggest problems with newly married or new, or you know young adults yeah. and I had paid for my own college and my husband's uh, father had paid for his college so we had that like how you do it type of thing so here we started off and we just learn to live simply and I was the youngest of nine and so my mom who was actually brought up her parents lived through, you know, lived through the depression because I am the youngest of nine. So even though it sounds like so far away, you know, she was, uh, she and my father were, you know, under like the ages of seven and lived during the depression. So you just learned how to do, you know, that whole make do, do without, you know, that's how I grew up. So I was very grateful that I had the simplicity of living, but knowing, on the other hand, the difference between wants and needs, and I always had my needs. So what if, uh, Sam, what if you didn't grow up that way, and now you're reading your book. We're talking with Sam Fatsigo today about a Catholic guide to spending less and living more from Ave Maria Press. What if you didn't grow up with that beautiful background and how those, those wonderful behaviors established? How do you now, or is it even possible now, to go back and start to live more simply? So, yes. And I think it really depends. Like, uh, a, a couple needs to really sit down and decide if what your priorities are. They're going to be different for every couple. And uh, nine years ago, my husband paid off our house. And when he did that, that was like it. we had... 13 children. So I gave birth to 12. And after uh, my 12th child was a, a couple years old, I had l lost a baby in miscarriage. And about a month after that, we got a phone call from a friend of ours who worked at the pregnancy center saying, there's a 12 year old, uh, 12 week old, <laughs> 12 week old baby boy who needs housing for a couple months while his mom gets situated. So I looked at my husband and I, you know, we talked about it and it took all of like three minutes for him to say, of course, we can help this baby out. And I think it's because we had been living, you know, debt free. He could say yes to this where maybe if we, our finances weren't in order, we wouldn't have been able to, to say, you know, make that leap of faith as easily. But because he, you know, it would have been irresponsible of us to take on another child if we could barely feed the ones we had or if our bank account was a mess or if we owed you know, money to the bank or 
had credit card debt up to our eyeballs. So we took in this little 12 week old baby and our family just blossomed and our actually our town blossomed. It was amazing watching all my kids, friends run over and holding the baby. I was like, this is like a ministry. Like we can pull this off because not only were my kids affected by it, it our whole town was, it was just amazing watching these college kids and high school kids and kids riding wow. bikes from the pool just to hold little Ray. And so after five years of those three months turning into five years, we finally got to adopt him. Wow. And so now he's nine, going to be 10 in January and uh, he's our lucky 13. Now, then again, you know, after Ray was a couple of years old, we got an email from a company that we worked with uh, through helping us finalize Ray's um, kind of foster care type of legality. It wasn't through the state. It was through this, a company called Safe Families. And so then we got a call saying that there was a baby going to be born and his mom and dad couldn't take care of him. And could we watch him for a year? So he hadn't even been born yet. And we were, again, we talked about it and prayed about it and talked to the kids. And of course the kids had been begging for years. Like we need another baby. <laughs> like, come on, mom. And again, I had lost an, another baby in a late miscarriage, which just was. Well, that's so hard. Just so, so hard as all women know going through that. Uh, our baby Steven was almost 20 weeks and it was just out of the blue and it was just heart wrench wrenching. Cause I think not only did I know that I was losing a baby, but I think I knew I was losing my fertility as being, you know, 44 years old and yeah, not so. probably able to have another one. So here we got, God just gave us another, this other baby to take care of. Well, he's, going to be five on August 1st and we still have him and we're praying that God will let us adopt him and uh, so please asking everybody for prayers whatever is best for him and whatever the will of the Lord is that we can keep him so we've had him for five years well so you know those are, those are things that when you are yeah. like I said stability with your finances help make those decisions easier uh, as an adoptive mom myself I'll absolutely be praying for you I know the blessing of being open to that yes um you just you never know what god is going to call you to and i love what you said sam earlier about you know because you were financially sound you were able to say that to give god your yes and there's some people like me who um say yes even when they're really not in a position to but god took care of it but he didn't he took care of it but he didn't so leave us there Right. So I try to tell people and, and I am all big on acronyms. That's how I remember, you know, my my lecture Divina. And that's how I remember like what I pray at night and going through my things. So I kind of tease people and I say, you know, remember my name. It's Sam. So S stands for like simplify. And this kind of goes through like people who are stressed out, like young moms. I am blessed. We have an amazing community in our town. I actually just left about six moms, these young moms who I just adore and they're doing such a good job. But you know, when they're like, Sam, we just need some advice or I'm struggling, I was like, okay, let's let's get to basics, like simplify. And if it comes to finances, like save, shop sales, suffer. We wrote this book during Lent in a pandemic. So suffer and sacrifice were really big. <laughs> and you know, I really feel like God has God is going to get you through this. So, you know, being in debt is so hard, but you just take those little baby steps. So mm -hmm. I tell people, you know, like just those S's, just remember those. And then I say A, A is for asking for help. Now mm -hmm. I am an extrovert and I'm the youngest. So I have a lot of friends who would rather like poke an ice pick in their eye than ask somebody for help. <laughs> but one of my best friends who has 12 kids now, she ha she just told me this a couple months ago. She said, you know, when I had like seven kids, Sam, I was dropping off the oldest at your house for some homeschool activity. And you came out to my van and you looked at me and you said, you're only going to survive if you learn to ask for help. Wow. 
And she goes, and I remember that. And I was like, oh, that was such great advice because I am like the spoiled brat of the town and everybody knows it. Like, hey, are you going to youth group? Can you pick up my kid? Hey, are you going to soccer practice? Can you pick up my kid? Hey, are you going to Aldi? Can you grab me a gallon of milk? Or, hey, do you have an extra cucumber? Or, you know, we're always, I'm always asking people and I ask God for help. And as a young mom, you know, when I was 21, when I had my first one, so I was, you know, the babies kind of came every year and a half. So here I'm pregnant with my fourth kid and none of my friends had had babies yet. And so I, you know, I was the only stay at home mom in my little neighborhood development. And so asking the saints, like I just fell in love with all the saints. They were my constant companions. So I would ask them, I'm like, you're up there having a party and I'm down here <laughs> breastfeeding and pregnant and tired and trying to do dishes. Like I need you to pray for me. And I found out like those first five, five years of marriage, I could tell you what the patron saint of anything was because I'm like, you're the patron saint of colic. You're the patron saint of diaper rash. You're the patron saint of marriages. You're the patron saint of, you know, uh, tough, tough times or, you know, good old St. Jude and good old, you know, St. Therese and St. Joseph, you know, oh my gosh, I love St. Joseph and, and St. Martha and St. all of them. Like I constantly had this A, asking for help. I was asking God, I was asking Our Lady, I was asking the saints, help me, you know, with this pregnancy, help me get through to this toddler, help me to be a good wife, help me to be a good homemaker, all the things. So I always tell people asking for help and maybe A is for adjusting your expectation. Mm -hmm. as a homeschooling mom i try to tell people all the time you know like yes of course we want our kids you know speaking latin and all the things by third grade and reading you know <laughs> lord of the rings in second grade but you need to adjust your expectations and be grateful for what you have and try yes. to you know balance out your life and maybe you need to adjust those expectations a little bit or you're going to bring yourself out so that was my A, and then M would be like make a plan, uh, make meals, because I feel like we, with meal planning, like I don't really sit down and make this fancy meal planning, but I do make simple meals. Like we have, you know, breakfast on Monday, tacos on Tuesday, you know, chicken on Wednesday, you know, uh, Oh gosh, what's th Thursday's usually leftovers and then Friday's pizza and then Saturday might be something on the grill and then Sunday might be something nicer in the cock pot or whatever. So, but I think that people get so intimidated. I know I do and I've been married for 32 years. I mean, all the things like with social media, like you see all the recipes and everything on Instagram. And I'm like, I don't even know what these things are that you need in this recipe, but if you're gonna do that, that's that's a budget cruncher like if you're gonna run out the store every time you see these things and i don't know about your kids but my kids don't like like fancy things like they don't like their food touching they don't they want the green beans over here and they want the chicken over here and they want the potatoes here so the simpler the better like just in those early days when i was always pregnant or nursing like just having like a roast chicken in the oven or, or two or three or whatever it was or something in the crock pot like I think that that's where I am, like making meals, make a plan, make a plan for your finances, make a plan for, you know, the, I still have it, but I had lists everywhere in my house, what time snack was, what time dinner was, what we're having for dinner, what time to put the baby down. I always had schedules and lists, and this is breakfast, and this is lunch, and this is your schoolwork. If I didn't have all those lists all over my house, I would have been like, ooh, who's next? Who's, what was I supposed to do today? Or, oh no, we forgot to put the baby down for a nap. Or, oh no, we missed that snack time. Or, don't forget, we need to go to, you know, soccer practice. Or, you know, I had to have making lists and making do and making a plan, especially with finances. That was a big thing for my husband is like, okay, we want to go on vacation. Let's make a plan. Or, we need to have money put aside. Let's make a plan. And because my husband was so good with that and having money and savings, when we had like, a, we've had two big hospital bills unexpectedly. And because we had that money, that plan that, you know, make that mm -hmm. plan, put money away, they didn't put us in this down, downward spiral. And we all go through that, the car breaking down, the dishwasher breaking down, yeah. all the things. I mean, the day uh, my husband told me that he paid off our house, I like almost had 
like a heart attack because that was such a huge thing. I mean, I remember yeah. when my parents paid off their house, it was like, let's kill the fatted calf and invite the whole town over. <laughs> so when he told me that, I was in shock. But yeah. literally two months later, you know, something broke down. Like we, there was never like, oh, we have all this extra <laughs> money now and all the things, you know. So I when, just when you tell talk people to remember this, it was like making your life bearable. Yes. When you talk about asking for help, I, I think that's, you know, the number one person to turn to, of course, is God. And, you know, we, we've been married the same thing, 32 years, and we've never, we, neither one of us had that firm foundation of finances. We've kind of just muddled through, but asking God, like being honest with each other, I tried to hide it for a long time. And I remember asking God for help. And he was very, he was very straightforward with me. God was kind of giving me this, this, uh, inclination in my heart. He's like, I will help you, but not until you come clean. Like I was hiding debt from my husband and there was just, you know, and I really thought it was unsurmountable, the problems that we had, the debt that we had, but asking God for help. And he actually sent us John and Evelyn Bean, who I see endorsed your book. They have um, Compass Catholic Ministries, a beautiful couple yes. and their plans helped us tremendously. They've been a, such a support in getting our, our feet back on our floor. And it wasn't overnight. It is, you know, five years later, six years later, we're coming out of debt and we're we're starting, but we needed a plan. We needed to figure out how to eliminate debt. And I see that I mean, there's chapter eight is all about eliminating debt. So excited to see that in there because I think sometimes people can be overwhelmed um, by that. I was happy to see you saying that you need to sacrifice. You need to suffer a little bit. That was the hard part for me that I wanted all my things and I wanted to be financially set without really, um, you know, I had left a full-time job, but kept living on that full-time in my mind. I was still getting that paycheck, but I wasn't. Um, and I think there's just so many things. It's uh, very emotional. We know that many divorces happen because of financial, probably the number one reason for divorce is often yeah. listed financial struggles and pain. Yes. Um, it's like top three. Yeah, the absolutely. Top three. Yes. And you know what? Satan wants us to get in that grips. And, you you know, so you said that that was a real struggle. Like, we all have our pet sins. And if we just learn to just chunk away at little by little, whether it's finances or other things, we're all in this together and we all have to struggle. But that's what's so great about being Catholic. And that's what's so, what's so kind of interesting about writing this book during Lent and during a pandemic. Like, the whole suffering and redemptive suffering and sacrificing for a certain intention, like what a better thing. Like when I would come home in the winter, you know, I worked out today. This is great. I, I really want to swing by and get that chai tea latte in this cold morning and I deserve it. And I'd be like, no, I'm going to say no. And I'm going to offer it up for my marriage. I'm going to offer it up for my grandson. I'm going to, you know, if, if I didn't have God to work together with me on this, I don't know how people do it. Like, how do you just say no and die to yourself constantly if you don't know that God is going to use that for his glory? Right? Oh, my gosh. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm talking this um, today with Sam Fetziger. Her book, is, and with along with her husband, Rob, is a Catholic guide to spending less and living more from Ave Maria Press. And as we're running kind of towards the end of the, the time we have together. So sad to see it go. I really want to point out chapter five. You talk about being generous and Sam, this is one of the things that God really showed me that surprised me. I remember, um, you know, to, to give, to give from the, what I thought I didn't have to give from the top. And one of the stories I tell is I literally had this $1 bill that I had found in my pocket once and I kept it in my purse and I kept it on my person all the time because it reminded me that god was keeping his promises that we were not gonna we were going to get through this and i was at mass and it was a daily mass so i didn't expect a collection but i was at an order and out comes the basket and all i have on me is this one dollar and i'm holding on to it for dear life and the but the basket's getting closer and closer and i was like lord jesus i trusted you and i dropped the dollar in the basket i got home sam i was taking off my pants and getting it ready to put them in the laundry and always check the pockets and i found another dollar i was like lord i just laugh like i don't know if you ever do this yeah. but you just laugh yes, at god's goodness <laughs> but isn't that great do you notice that that was like god's little throwing you a, throwing you a ball right there you know 
I think that we have the, one of the interesting things, and we talk about this in the book, um, and people can actually get like it. You can get the book from Ave, you can get it from Amazon, but we have a, a we're trying to do a website. We're new at this. Like we are not authors. We're like mom and pop down in <laughs> Dewey, Maryland, barely, you know, making it. And here all of a sudden Ave calls us to write a book. And we're like, hello, who us? Like we don't know what we're doing. And so we started this website, which is really rough. We're working on it, but it's fatsfam.com. But on there, so I we wrote too many chapters for the book. And so we put these three chapters for free downloads on our website. And they're like our favorite. They're how we do college, how we feed a family, and how we do weddings. So I have, you know, 14 kids. The oldest is 31, and the youngest is going to be five in, on August 1st. So we have four married. Like uh, we have done, you know, almost all the things. And we're still, we're still raising, you know, we still have six at home. And we're still struggling to do that parent thing and to bring up holy kids. But those are really some of our favorite things. And then also I, my favorite thing in the book is when our kids talk. Yeah. Our kids talk about like my mean mom and dad made me pay for everything. <laughs> we got Washington Post in an article about us about five years ago because our kids were graduating college debt free. And they're like, how wow. is this possible? So we talk about that on the website and you know what has happened is we have raised these really responsible great older children like it's so great to see them like we're very proud of them we hope that all of our kids you know continue to be wise and i tell people i tell my kids like i don't want you to be smart i want you to be wise and to mm -hmm. you know always follow the will of god and that takes you know a lot in this culture and the social media is killing our families and our kids who are constantly seeing like the new drink from Starbucks or the new shoes from whoever and the fancy cars and all the things. So if we can start getting them to understand the difference again between wants versus needs. And then also I've seen in my kids the difference between appreciating something and expecting something. Yeah. Like, sure, we'll go and we'll get maybe this ice cream cone every once in a while. And they're like, thank you, thank you, mom. Instead of being like, I wanted chocolate, you know, instead of they appreciate it, instead of being like, oh, I've, I deserve this. Like, I expect this. Like, and I think that's really hard for moms and dads to do right now. Our kids are seeing things all the time and we're slowly getting ourselves into deeper and deeper debt. And we're teaching them that instant gratification, like, you know, every time we drive by McDonald's or Chick-fil-A, you know, of course, we, I would love to pull in. I'm thirsty and hungry, too. But no, we are going to go home <laughs> or I have food packed in the car, like just teaching our kids, yeah. because that way you're going to raise them to be responsible adults who aren't, you know, you know, a lot of the kids nowadays, they expect like I made a goal. So like, you have to take me to McDonald's or get me a Slurpee or whatever. I'm like, no, you made a goal. Hip hip hooray for you. Like, let's go home. <laughs> So I think it's just that training. Um, we're all in this together. We're all struggling. We all made mistakes just because my husband and I didn't. We, we said just because we don't fight about finances doesn't mean <laughs> we got this made. Well, I think, you know, at, at a point, somebody has to be the first generation. You have to be the change you want to, to see in the world. Right. I love that expression. And, you know, if if someone is like me who didn't my my parents were very good with money. They just didn't share that with us. They just didn't pass that along. So it was something that my husband and I had to learn on our own. And even though 30 years later into the marriage, it, that's part of marriage. You keep working on things, whatever it is, and you're making so yes. many wonderful points. Um, again, we could talk for hours, but unfortunately, we've come to the end of our, um, our podcast. Is there anything you want to leave people with, Sam, to remember about this book or kind of encourage well, them in their own journey. Me something. Rob and I just came back from EWTN. We got to go fly out to Alabama to be on Jim and Joy. And he, Jim, first of all, they're an amazing couple. Like they're the real deal. And yeah. Jim kept saying the legacy, the legacy that we are passing on to our kids. So I try to teach people like you want to teach them this legacy. And, you know, uh, particularly with the college debt, I just really, that really just gets to me because I know so many people who, you know, postpone having a baby because they have college debt. And in our diocese, and I think everywhere, like you can't join a religious order or become a nun or, or, or a priest if you have debt. Like that is 
you're so we're hindering our vocation. So trying to teach people living simply now, and then what you know, what better way to teach kids responsibility than having them learn to sacrifice and you know maybe get a job to help pay for something or whatever. So teaching our kids, passing on this legacy of whether it's debt free or just living simply. I think that's huge. And, uh, you know, let's just keep praying for each other. And, you know, it's hard because sometimes a spouse is in an agreement. So you do your part. I tell people like, oh, we can't, uh, my husband won't let us have another baby because he doesn't think we can afford it. So what I try to tell women is that, okay, well, then you need to cut your bills down. You need to try to shop sales. You need to go to the butcher and find out when the meat's on sale. You need to shop at Aldi or Lidl or all those things. Like, if you want this, then you're going to have to suffer a little bit to get, prove to him that you can afford another kid. Yeah. You know, silly little things like that. But again, just remember we're all in this together and just keep communicating and just keep praying for wisdom. Well, Sam, you have so many amazing things to offer. Again, we're talking with Sam Fatziger today about a Catholic guide to spending less and living more. Ave Maria Pras. And I always encourage people to go to their local Catholic bookstore if they have one nearby to purchase their books and how can we keep in, in touch with you and Rob? So I'm on Instagram and Facebook and you can send me questions. I love connecting with people. We, I am uh, Sam Lancaster Fatsinger on Facebook and Sam JMJ on Instagram and my husband's on Twitter. You can go to Fatsfam and you know just connect with us through those medias and uh, we'll be happy to help out or answer any questions you have. Oh, thank you so much. I'll have all the links in the show notes, of, uh, of course. Thanks again, Sam, for joining us today. Thank you so much. Oh, my best. pleasure. You have been listening to A Seeking Heart with Allison Jingris, distributed through Breadbox Media. God bless.